One of the jobs we're going to do today is we're going to strip this gearbox down. It's been in my container for a long, long time. It has got oil in it. But we're going to strip it down and uh, we're going to rebuild it. Well, not rebuild it, but take it a bit. There's a little bit of corrosion on this shaft here, so I don't know. I just want to make sure it's going to be okay. I'm going to clean all clean it up. Um, I did put a new main shaft in it, uh, new gaskets, etc., etc. But uh, I'm going to show you really how to take an LT77 to bits. Uh, if we look at the the register, the number on it here, this is a 50A. Then it's got its serial number with a suffix H. You you find that here. All right, that's written on there. It's most important when you're looking for parts to have that number. The serial number is somewhat important, but that will tell you what it is. So this is out of a 2.5 naturally aspirated diesel or a petrol. Uh, so there's sorry about that. So there's not much uh, in the difference. I haven't forgotten the uh, LT85 project, but I'm stuck for gaskets, so that's waiting over there. So first of all, the thing we have to do first is to take the plugs out and drain the oil off. So I'm going to hang it off the chain and then I'm going to come back to this when it's all nicely empty. So once you've got your top cover off you're going to take this circlip off the back and it can be a bit tight So there's a little clip. The 300 TDI's didn't have this particular clip on it. So just again, put that to one side. The next thing, we're going to take this collar off. Uh, we need this, I always use this special Land Rover tool to take it off with. It's made out of two pieces and if you can see here, there's a thin groove here that fits nice and snug inside there. So you assemble this tool, put it together like this, slip the collar over the top, get your air gun and pull it off. Yeah. They are tight. You can see where there's some metal shavings come off there when it was put back on. Not too bad. But they are tight. So you take the collar off and that tool now is finished with. The next thing, you've got to get the bolts out of here. Oh, wait a minute, I think we've got it. Yeah, no, that's right. Before we do that, while everything's together, if I tip this over, you can see this uh, selector part here, it's got a little roll pin in here and we've got to knock that out without dropping it in the box. So we'll do that before we take the back off, because otherwise we can't get the back of the gearbox off. We'll get our punches, find a suitable punch. Now this is off a Defender gearbox, this is off a Defender, so it's going to be a little bit different to a Discovery. So just be careful, just be aware of that. So that's off. The next thing we need to do, this, the pin's dropped in the bottom of the gearbox, but it doesn't matter because we've taken it a piece anyway. The next thing we're going to do is take these spline bolts off here, and you need a spline socket. Now I didn't have one. So I just welded a 10mm socket end onto a piece of uh, an old socket that was stripped out. And that seems to work out fine. So we're going to take these bolts off in order. Uh, this might be a bit boring so I'm going to hold, pause it here and then we'll come back. Once all those bolts are, those spline bolts are out and you don't have to worry about um, the length of them, they're all the same. There are now two bolts up in this top corner, Oops, if you can see there, look, there's two bolts up there. They're uh, just a 13mm uh, diameter head. 
So we're going to use a little ratchet to get those off. And we'll come back to that in a minute. If you're not sure of how parts go back together, just take a, a sharpie and uh, like for example this uh, where we've taken the roll pin out as you can see I just put a little mark a black mark on there so we know which side the, the actual roll pin went through because it is quite difficult to uh, remember sometimes especially if you take a box apart and then you need parts you're not going to get them for two or three weeks and you'll forget how it goes back together so this guide is just to show you how to uh, strip it all down. Now we can probably take this to the edge of the bench like that. Hold on a minute, that you can't see. We'll take it to the edge of the bench. And we'll just tap that to come off. And then we're going to grab our little favourite pry bar here once we've got it loose we're going to tease it off because um, we don't want to really disconnect this there's two faces, there's this main gearbox casing and there's a flat plate here we don't want to really separate them all off at once so we'll just tease it off there we go and take this piece off this selector at the same time and that will expose the gearbox and you see that there's a gasket um, that can all be cleaned off the next thing that has to come off is the fifth gear and the gear at the bottom here so what we're going to do it's a long time since I've done one of these. We're going to take the snap ring off here first. So once we've got the circlip off, we're going to take this little clip off here, little C clip. That's coming off the top, put it into the box. And then we're going to get our spanner and take off the two bolts to hold the fifth gear on. Now you might have noticed I've put a couple of bolts, took a couple of dummy bolts in one here, one here, just to hold those casings together whilst we're, we're still working on this bit. It's uh, just, just to be careful, you know, just to make sure it all, you don't get gears and things all over the floor, which you're not going to do. But, Now there's two ways of doing this, you could take the little C-clips out of there, which is kind of difficult, or you can take the, the two bolts off. Now we're going to just unscrew those. Get them out of the way. Get them out of the way. And then this will simply come out of, there's a pin, there's a pin just here for this selector. But that comes out the way and then we can just get rid of that and we can move this out the way. And again, if you're not sure which way it goes round, just give it a little bit of a mark. You know, you can, and, and take a picture of it because everybody in this world now has got cameras. So take a picture of things as you're taking them apart. Makes life a lot easier. So the next thing we need to do, now we've got that off, we can lift this off, there we go, we've put that in the box, we've got to get this uh, hub off here. Now this uh, is a little bit tight on here so I think we might have to use our pulling tool to pull that all off. Just let me uh, just let me just check. So the next thing we're going to do, we need to have a puller to pull this section off, pull, it, pull this unit off. Um, it's not advisable to hammer it, 
Now, I have sort of a half mix of everything here. So, I've got these from Land Rover. These, this this uh, particular half moon tool goes over here to get, grab onto the gear. And as you can see at the back, it's got a place for two pins. Well, I, didn't, I don't have the other bit of tool. So what I did is I knocked a couple of these up, these puller bars, and not puller bars, but puller bars, and they just go into those pins like this, and they lock in so it won't come out. You with me? Can you see that? So that's how that goes. But also we need to use it in conjunction with the hydraulic uh, press. And this is why it gets a little bit complex. So I've got an old rubber band here. So I'm going to put these bits on like this. And I'm going to use this band to go over the top and keep those in place whilst I take them off. There, see? And then we can get the strong back on, put that on. Then we can work out where it's going to go. So it's got quite a way to, to come down yet, so I'm going to work it out a little bit. And I'm going to set this up so we're not wasting any time. So as you can see I've got the puller set up. Right mess about. But I can't think of any other way of really doing it. And this is why I, I sort of like preferring doing 300 TDI boxes because they're relatively easy to do. So we're going to make sure that's nice and tight. And we start to do the hydraulic pulling now. I think that this machine I've got here is about on its last legs because it'll only do a little bit Chinese. Eh? So you're just going to have to keep pulling this all the way. Till it comes off. I can only pull about less than a quarter of an inch at a time because the, the seals have shot in my puller. But you can see now that the, the gear is coming off completely. So I'm going to pause this until it comes off because it's a bit boring. It soon comes off, it doesn't take long to get off, but you can't sort of hammer it and pry it or anything like that. You've got to take it off as it needs to be. So now you'll find out there's a, there's a washer at the front and a spacer at the back. Can you see that? There's a spacer. So there's a washer at the front, this side, and then at the back there's a washer. Keep them in order. Don't get them mixed up. You'll find too that there's a bearing on the shaft. Now the bearings here are quite unique. They're actually a split bearing. So open them up, take them off, put them back in the place they were supposed to be. Now we can see now, quite easily, there's not much at the back of the LT77s. But what we've got to get off now is this nut here. You see it's stalked over, let me see, let me turn this over. The nut here is stalked over. That means stalking means hitting it into a groove. So what we're going to do now is going to get a little punch and open that up and then we're going to put a socket on to get this off. Uh, at the same time I'm going to put the original bolts back in the holes. As per usual, we don't want to lose them. So the next thing is to get that off. Sometimes when you buy screwdriver sets and things like that, you get a lot of bits and pieces that you'll never really use. 
But, like this here, you can shape them into a nice little chisel which will go inside here quite easily and open up that stock to nut. It's so much easier than hitting it. So you can see there, look, it's just a, a regular screwdriver that I've ground down that will go inside that, <coughs> inside that slot there and open up the nut again. Like that. Don't be too violent with it, but there you go. So the next thing is to get the nut off. Getting the nut off can be quite tricky. I use an inch and a quarter socket. It's a nice snug fit. It's probably metric, but I haven't got one. To stop the gears, to stop everything turning around, I've reassembled this gear. I've taken the gear off the synchro and I've put the bearing back on just temporarily. And I'm going to jam the gears up with a piece of rag. So when I'm trying to undo this, this rag is going to pull into the, that gear and lock it up. Watch. I'll put it the right way around and then you can watch. So that's off. Um, and that saves a lot of banging and clattering and things like that. So you can use that tip. Sometimes you might need a big bar. So the next thing, I'm going to take this gear off again. And reassemble it back into its place where it was. And then we need to get this gear off. I'm going to take that bearing off again. Put that away. And now we need to get this bearing off, uh, this gear off here. So we're going to use the same tool again we use to take off the collar. You know, remember this collar? We're going to use the same tool because it's got the same placement on here. So we're going to take the gun, reverse this back, <coughs> assemble your tool again. In fact, I think that's, I'm not sure if there's a, there's a special. Let's see if we can get this off. Should come off. It's tight though. I thought so. We need to get a, a spacer. Like I say, it's a long time since I've done one. That's probably what this is for. I didn't buy the full complete kit because it was so expensive. There we go. So putting the spacer in there. Oh, you need to be like a juggler. Put the bits on. There. Cap over the top. There we go. And then tighten this up. And off it comes. So that's off. That didn't take too long to do. Put the spacer back in the box. So now we're down to our back cover. So I'm going to pause it here, put a few bits and pieces away, and then we'll come back and take the end cover off. We're just about to split this gearbox, the main casing from the end case from the end plate. Um, but before we do that, there's two very important things we've got to take out. Let me turn that around so you can see. Tip it up. You've got to take the, the screw out of here and this cover with a little plate you must extract that. So I'm going to do that now and we'll, we'll come back. So you're going to get this piece off the top. Put that in the box. Again 
put the holes, the screws back in the holes. Now, whilst I was pausing, I had a hell of a job trying to get this top screw out. The uh, it was punched over to stop it falling out, but the problem is it was an old screw that I must have used before, and I couldn't get a screwdriver slot on it. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is take the cover off with this in place and uh, drill and tap that out later. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's one of those things you come across. Now you can see here I've got a frame. Right. I've got a frame here, and this is something I knocked up to support these gearboxes. And again, you can see how dusty it is. I've never used it for years. So what I'm going to do is take my supporting screws out. and lift it onto that frame. This was made for a LT77. You could do it on a bench, but this is a little bit easier. And now we're going to lift it up. Maybe not. Get it in the right place. And it's supposed to screw it to the base, screw it to the stand, but uh, if we do that we're not going to get the cover off. So I'm just going to put it there for now, and then we're going to take this, lift this cover off. It is heavy, these things are hellishly heavy. Um, so sometimes you might need two people. So let's see if we can get this cover off. There is not a great deal of places to. Uh... Oh, there's the reverse. There's the reverse side of the one. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some long bolts through here so it doesn't fall off, and then I'm going to tap that joint around. So now we can take the cover off. I've loosened it a little bit with the flat chisel. I've taken the bolt out at the bottom now, and I'm going to lift the cover off. Hopefully, wait a minute. Sometimes jams back down again. There's some dowels in there that are quite tricky to get out. Uh, if you think they're tricky to get out, you try to get it back in again. There we go. There's the cover off. Knocked the bolt out. So now we're into our gearbox. Ooh, look at that. That's not interesting. We can take all the old gasket off. So again, it's the same principle. Primary shaft, first motion shaft, turns the lay shaft, turns the gears, um, and that's all there is to it really. So to get everything out, there's a really funky system here on this selector. You've got the two brass forks here. That's what you can see. I don't know. Let me zoom in a bit. Instead of looking at me. There we go. So you've got your two brass forks. One here, one here. Uh, you've got your reverse pivot now here's something important this washer sits on top of the reverse idler gear so now with the pin out we can pull that out to one side and put it on the bench the slipper will come out put that back into the gear try to put as much stuff back into the the gears as you can uh, that by the way that little slipper that's just come off the reverse idler will only go in one way. You see, it's got a step on it, so you can't put that in one. Next thing, we've got to take this clip off here. You just need a small screwdriver. Getting quite a few tools now kicking about. Take that out. Oh, we don't need to take that clip off. That was just to hold it in place. 
take that out, take the arm off, if you can. Sometimes it won't come out. And it looks like this one's not going to come out. Yes it is. You can see underneath I was turning this uh, selector shaft, turning it so this comes out, there'll, there'll be a little gap. So keep that together. You don't need to take this pin out. So now we've got to turn that selector, push this up. These are really sort of tricky if you've never seen one before. You've got to get everything in line. Whoop, in neutral. You get that in line and you've got to turn it. Now this is going to be a tricky thing to see. Um, yeah, you can't really... Maybe, maybe well, just a minute, I'm going to drop this camera. On the selector shaft there's a pin. You can see I'm pointing to the pin here. Now you've got to turn it because there's a slot in the gearbox face plate here that has to come when we when we lift out the gear cluster this has got to all come out together if it's turned and it's not in its slot you ain't going to get it out so make sure that's in that right place first and then we can carry on um, also here's a, here's a spacer for the reverse gear so we've got to put that to one side as well before we lose things because it is kind of tricky um, you know, this bear, <coughs> I replaced this shaft quite a long time ago, like I said, it must have been five years ago. So I'm not going to actually replace everything. Well, I'm not going to replace anything apart from gaskets. But I'm going to show you how, it, uh, all, how you put it together. So the next thing is, we're going to clamp this cover to the frame. I've just taken the camera off the frame so you can see what I was trying to say. You see there's a slot in here and there's a pin just here. Those must be in line. It's kind of mission critical that those are in line. So take a good look at how the selector should be. All right, And you can see around here where the pin is. You've got to get them in back in line again otherwise you're not going to get all these bits back together. So I'm going to put the uh, camera back on the frame and we're going to try and lift this out. Now you can see where I've put a bolt in to stop this lifting off because it is kind of tricky but uh, it's not impossible. But as you can see here if you remember the LT85 gearbox you can see the the setup is exactly the same. You've got first, third, second, first and the reverse is matched up to the synchro so that's how they kept everything compact. On the TDI, on the 300 TDIs, they put the reverse and the fifth out here. If you can remember, I couldn't get this uh, screw out of here, so I'm going to have a real nightmare of a job trying to get this out. Um, well, we'll see. Because usually what you do is you take the spring out of here and it relieves the pressure to get the uh, detent out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it up and hopefully everything is going to come out together. Yeah I think that's going to work. So what we've got to do is do something really clever and we're going to lift all three pieces out at once. I don't think we're going to do it. I usually do this on the floor but let's have a look. Oh wait a minute, let's take this piece off first. That's your first motion shaft. And there's your synchroniser ring. Keep those together. The most important thing is not to let this synchroniser go. You don't want it to pop out. So here we go. that one's on just a spring but that's the problem because we couldn't get the detent out we couldn't get it all out quite even so we lost nothing really 
All we've got is the little slipper and the uh, parts come out of the sinker mesh. So we've got that to one side. We can push that to one side now. And the sinker mesh, we've got to take that to bits to rebuild that. That's not a big deal because I'm going to take this... Oh, wait a minute, you've gone down here now. Wait a minute. Where are you? Right, so we've got the shaft out now. The synchroniser fell to pieces. One of the slippers came out, but these are a lot easier than the um, ones we had uh, on the LT85. So the next thing, we're going to keep this to one side. Yeah, you see all the bits are coming out of the synchro, that's not the end of the world. We've got to take this... Uh, wait a minute. We've got to take this split... Uh, what do they call them? Circlips. We're going to take the circlip off. And then we're going to put this on the press and we're going to push under this bearing. We're not going to, under this gear, we're not going to press under the bearing, we're going to take under the gear. And that's going to make life a lot easier. So I'm going to set up the press now and then we're going to take this to bits. As far as, uh, as far as the plate's concerned, we've got nothing else to do. We can, uh, oops, that's going to stay. If you want to replace the bearings, they're quite easy to knock out. You know, you can knock them out from underneath. We've got to clean up this plate, make sure it's all nice. Um, we're going to inspect the lay shaft to make sure all the teeth are good and there's nothing untowards, all the bearings are nice. I, I know the bearings are good because I've, I've replaced a few of them before. But I'm going to set the camera up near the press and then we're going to show you how you press the bearings off. So I've got the um, main shaft in the press. I've got the bearing puller under the first gear and then supported on the cradle of the or the saddle of the press. Now you, this is the way you can get two things off at once and you must do it in this order. You can't take those gears off first and, and this makes it easier. And again, this is an air over oil press, so I can simply hold the bottom, press it, and it's off. This is where it's a bit tricky. So we're going to take this off. There's the bearing. And then take this to the bench. So how do the, the parts go in a very specific order? You've got your circlip first, then the bearing. Then you're going to, this piece we slid off in the press, like this. This comprises of several parts inside. There is an inner sleeve, a bearing, and the gear, and they go together like that. The sleeve goes from the bearing side. So that's easy to remember put them together like that in that section. The next bit is the synchro hub. You can pull that off in one unit but try and keep it all in one, one piece. We don't want to take it off. You must remember that the teeth point towards the back. The, point, the rounded side points towards the back of the gearbox. Do you get that drift? You saw that bit points towards there. Save that synchro the synchro ring off, we're going to show you how you check those later, those are pretty new. And then the, th the third, second gear can come off, I had to think about that myself there for a minute. So the second gear can come off and then the bearing and we'll slip that in there. So the next piece we've got to take off is we've got to take this bearing off which will allow us to take all the, the other part of the shaft off. And again we've lost that synchro. So what we're going to do now is set up the press and press off this side. So with the main shaft now set up in the press again we're going to take the third gear off. And we're going to take the bearing, the spacer, the synchro hub and the gear all off at once. 
So I'm using a, a socket. Uh, where can you? There you are. So I'm going to use a socket uh, just on a shaft to push this through. And this is around about 15 millimeters diameter. <clears throat> so it goes through the center of the bearing. So here we go. Well, let's. Uh, so support your shaft underneath. Ooh. And just gently bring the press down. And there, that's it, it's off. So you put that to one side. See, all the bits fall to bits. Oh, there she goes. Well, we'll pick that up in a minute. Put these on the bench. Now we'll get back to explaining how this goes back together. So the last job we're going to do, stripping this down, is to take out the oil pump that's in the extension housing. And that is just simply some 10mm, well, I mean 10mm headed bolts. Carefully take this cover off. Now there are some dowels in it. Um, let's see if we can use this little tool to just prise underneath it a little bit. There it goes. And then once it's opened up, we can use a little screwdriver and see if we can get under there and get that out. It's quite tricky. Because, like I say, there are dowels in it, <clears throat> and you can't really get into it because it's all slippy and oily. And it's coming up. That's what you get in real time, eh? Come on, there we go. Now, when we get the the pump out, we'll notice that it's made in several bits and pieces. There's your key drive, your square key, that's the drive. And then you've got two little, what we call, tufnol gears. They're actually gears that's made in resin and uh, cloth. And all glued and sandwiched together. And of course this one won't come out, but let's see if we can get it out. Oh, not having much luck this morning. So there we go, that's one part of the gear, and there's the other, and it's just a little gear pump. Now, what you've got to inspect is everything inside here, there's no scores or burrs or anything like this, and most importantly check all the gears, the teeth are good, there's no cracks in the outside ring, uh, it's all got to go together nicely. Now, what I've found from experiences and people who don't really understand the old defenders that these gearboxes used to run on were designed to run on ATF automatic transmission fluid which is extremely light now common practice is to put gear oil in a gearbox but the problem is the gearbox oil in winter is so thick it can strip out these gears so we always take them apart, we never take anything for granted, we always take them apart and just check them and just make sure that they're alright. If they're okay, there's no need to replace them every five minutes, you know, you can go, you can go bonkers replacing absolutely everything. But um, just, it's always worth a, a little look to see what there is. And the other things are, uh, uh, oh there's that gear coming up. Uh, this oil transfer bushing here. On the 300 TDIs, these were a problem, but it doesn't seem to be much of an issue on the uh, LT77s, as far as I know. Because, like I say, this is all technology for me now. The other things you want to check... Oh, there's, there's, the, there's the washers still on the bottom of the drain bowl. You want to make sure everything is nice and clean. I just, <laughs> I've just lost the... Uh, the split pin that we knocked out at the beginning. Make sure everything's nice and clean in the castings. I've already replaced this oil seal once, so I'm not going to do it again. But just 
you know, just out of a matter of course, because this is your last chance of replacing it. Just have a look around all the drills and tappings, make sure they're all nice and clean. But we're going to do a good inspection in the next video. So we'll get on, we'll call that a day for this, and next video we're going to do is inspecting all the parts.